All right, you ready? Yep. Three, two, one. Hey everybody, it's Eric and Roy. Thanks for checking out another HatchetCast episode. And today we're doing a review on the Huxworks Flow 556K can. Um, but before we get started, go ahead and the like and subscribe button. It really does help us out. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and roll right into the disclaimer. Yeah, so disclaimer is this particular can was not purchased uh, or given to us basically by Huxworks, okay? Uh, this is purchased through uh, AAA Gun and Ammo here in Plant City, Florida, and my shop. So if you guys are interested in purchasing any cans, you can come see me. But, come see uh, it, yeah. Come see us, so come see us at the shop. But uh, unbiased opinion here. Cool, specs. Unbiased, unbiased, but these are completely biased specs. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, so uh, as far as everybody's first immediate thought is what is price? So MSRP is 1306 with a street price of 1000 1306. That's getting up there. $13 so. and I'm just kidding. <laughs> $1306. Yeah. Bucks. Um, but the street price is about $1125. Usually your muzzle devices, they have two different kinds, your flash hider and your muzzle brake. Your flash hider you can get anywhere from $124. Your brake is going to run you about 137. Yeah, and you'll find as far as that uh, that's kind of like your industry in in industry Industry standard. Industry standard. Uh, can't talk. I got a little sinus infection going on here. <laughs> but you'll find some. Uh, you'll find some cells out there and stuff like that on it. So. Yeah. Uh, as far as our weight, uh, it's 11.8 to 12.9 ounces, depending on uh, the size. Um, overall length is going to be 5.5 inches. So for those who are curious, it's about the same as like a Surefire RC2 Mini uh, can. It's great on like a Mark 18, 11.5. Yeah, most definitely. What is the? What is it? As far as the? What does it say for the overall length that it actually adds to the? Uh, as four. far as that 14 centimeters? No, uh, no, no. no four, like 4.9 inches. Four so as far as the inches. actual length that right. you're going to add to your gun, the overall length that you're going to add to your gun is 4.9 inches. Yeah. It's probably the most important to me. Yeah. Uh, keeps a really, really nice balance point. Yeah, absolutely. <coughs> and, and most of the time, you're, uh, that is a, something that we will also highly consider whenever we're adding cans. Yeah. We, we're like, hey, how is it going to be ridiculous? Like, anyways, uh, your sound pressure, so your DBs, we didn't measure these. Yeah, uh, the this, is, this is straight off of Huxworks. I don't know what barrel length this was measured on. Yeah. I'm sure there's probably some type of stat on their website for saying it. Um, but I do. I think it's like 143 dBs. Yeah, 143 to the average ear. So about 18 dBs of reduction. Honestly, for 5.56 cans, we're running ear pro. Yeah, yeah. always. So, yeah. Uh, but the tone's really nice. So uh, as far as... That's probably the most important <coughs> thing. Uh, oh, talking yeah. about tone. Uh, a lot of cans may have a little bit more pop that you hear mm -hmm. at the ear. Yeah. <clears throat> with this particular cab, actually, for me personally, the way I feel like it sounds, um, I, I really like the way it sounds because it's pushing a lot of that gas forward. Yeah. So you're not getting any of that gas pressure back at the chamber. Mm. So you lose a little bit of that gas pop that sometimes you'll hear from a traditional can that's more of a blowback style. Right. But with this flow through, at the ear, personally, to me, it has a really, really good tone to it. Yeah, so, which kind of helps with that. As far as the ratings, the DB ratings might be. I'm not sure if it is higher than another manufacturer. I don't really ever look at DB ratings when I purchase in a can. I look at as far as what is going to fit my rifle system mm. uh, and without sacrificing too much weight and size uh, and then muzzle blast. Yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. As far as the durability, it passes the minimum six SOCOM reliability <laughs> test. I know the FBI, I think, is actually... Didn't yeah. they pick these up recently? I do believe. I think so. Yeah, anyways, if you're a female body inspector, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> hey, anyways, if you're an agency and you picked up these cans, just, uh, I'm pretty sure... I haven't anyway. seen one of those shirts in a long time. Yeah, I know, dude. <laughs> it's like the ones you find at like the carnival. Mm -hmm. um, the flea market. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so, as far as our coating, it has C-Series Cerakote or matte black. Uh, they are a different color option, 17-4 stainless steel. Uh, and the service life, this is actually an important one, says 10,000 round threshold with an objective 20,000 rounds. Um, make sure you have cleaning to ensure product performance and the service life is not compromised. Can you dive a little bit more into what is the threshold versus the objective? Well, I mean, I, from, from what I have heard, um, I know Huxworks has pushed some of these cans well beyond that 10,000 mm. into that 20,000 range. Uh, where we are sitting at 
personally right now through the first one that we have, uh, this one right here was purchased in September of last year, uh, is right at probably 6,000 rounds yeah. without cleaning, okay? And that's kind of what they're talking about with service life mm. too, is maintaining it. One of the downsides um, to me is, is, is cleaning things. I don't have a problem cleaning stuff. I highly recommend that you do it, but that's not something that I do, so my fault, if this can dies a little sooner, that's gonna be on me. But All I can right. tell you right now, sitting at 6,000 rounds uncleaned, it's still functioning absolutely perfectly. Fine. Almost so, like new. Almost like new. Yeah. So I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say follow what I do um, whatsoever. I would suggest cleaning your can following what the manufacturer tells you to do because you're gonna increase that lifespan. That, that being said, one of the big questions that I get a lot of times from individuals when they're purchasing a can, especially new shooters, or new buyers to shooting a suppressor is, hey, can I service it? Well, this particular can, you can. There's a lot of them out there that you cannot. They're wow. just pretty much just, just straight up sealed can. Huxworks does recommend that you do it. I do believe that they recommend that you use just like a typical normal CLP, like mm. you would clean your rifle with, just soak it in it and break down that carbon and then kind of flush it out. Okay, so, yeah, cool. Yeah, as far as your muzzle devices, um, it is, they have a flash hider and a muzzle brake. Um, the weight as far as is 3.3 ounces, but the overall length of that is gonna be 2.3 inches. Added to your barrel is 1.7 inches uh, for both the flash hider and the muzzle brake. What's interesting so about- So just long enough to uh, pin like a 14 bot. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, Maybe, yeah. might get you to a 13.9, possibly, yeah. uh, with, with, uh, with some type of shim behind it, but uh, what 14 vibe would be like the ideal length to pin and weld that way. What's, what's interesting though about this is the quick disconnect. This, the quick disconnect system is a counter thread. Yeah. Yeah, so Which, there is no there is no locking mechanism that comes into play. It's just it's just a reverse thread. Um, if you're very simple mind like, <laughs> like myself and Eric, you have a tendency to forget that it's reverse thread. Yeah. Um, and and basically the way the muzzle device kind of works at the same time. If you look at the flash hider, it almost has like a spiraling to it where it kind of almost tightens the can down mm. the entire time. I have not had one of these cans back off. Yeah. Now I will tell you, I had a muzzle device back off the barrel but that was due to improper installation that I forgot that I didn't ever tie it in it down. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, ah, I'm just fine. Yeah, <laughs> it's a suggestion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's a suggestion. Uh, uh, I was kind of in a hurry, you know. Yeah. Uh, but the can itself, uh, no issues with it ever coming off the muzzle device. Yeah. Okay, it has always been on there. As far as the reverse thread thing, I think it's a fantastic idea. I think it's genius, very, very simple design. Yeah. Not a whole lot to screw up there. Unless you're someone like myself and Eric that can't remember that it's reverse thread, <laughs> Listen, and you're constantly trying to tighten it down to take it off. It's, it's against our nature, okay? <laughs> yeah, correct. Yeah. Um, but if you do remember it, uh, or take the time to actually look at the can, there's actually a little arrow on there that tells you which direction <laughs> to go. <laughs> so, but maybe it's wrong. Who knows? Like Maybe <laughs> yeah. they printed it on there. Uh, so there is a direction on there. And one of the other things that I love about this yeah. is they put flats on it. So for whatever reason, if this can does carbon lock up, mm -hmm. You do have wrench flats, or we over tighten it, trying or to over take tighten it. Yeah, yep. correct. Uh, that was primarily what we did is yeah. over tighten it. I, I probably have only had this thing carbon lock on recently, as I've increased to roughly about that six thousand round mm -hmm. count, maybe a little above that. Only carbon locked on probably once or twice. Yeah, where I had to use a wrench. All the other times, once the can cooled down, I could actually just take it off by hand. Yeah. Uh, so it's actually been really, really solid when it comes to that. And that's that's with zero maintenance, which you should not do. You should maintain your stuff. Right. So, so. so I mean, talking about the, <clears throat> the inside of this can, what's so, what it, what's so insane about this is it's not like your traditional baffle system. So why do you think that this is going to be the future? Yeah, I mean, A, first off, it's 3D printed. Yeah. So there's so many more things that you can do with 3D printing versus a typical normal CNC mill or CNC lathe. <clears throat> the way it comes to designing baffles, um, CNC mills will only cut certain angles. Okay. Uh, when it comes to 3D printing, you can pretty much put whatever angle you want wow. into it. Uh, it really, I mean, there's obviously people out there that are smarter than I am when it comes to 3D printing, but I'm not sure if Huxworks is one of the first to do it. I'm, I'm sure there's plenty of other companies out there that have experimented around with 3D printing. This is the first one I've ever played with and I have shot. Yeah. And, and I can tell you it is, to be honest with you, is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, I mean the uh, flow through is insane. Yeah, the flow through design is pretty much just a game changer when it comes to over gassed guns. Yeah. You're no longer eating all that in your face. Mm -hmm. The other beauty behind that I love <coughs> man, is that I don't have to go and tune my rifle. 
Yeah. Okay. Meaning that I don't have to play with my buffer buffer weight. I don't have to play with heavier springs, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I can just pretty much grab the gun the way it is, with a even with like a just a standard like a you know a rifle that you would typically say over gassed. Okay, like a like a Knight's Armament 11.5. You yeah. know, um, a CQB 11.5 or a Daniel Defense Mark 18. Those are both over gas systems. Yeah. <clears throat> not even changing buffer system in them, not even going to like H3 or anything like that, just leaving what came from the factory, like mm. an H2 buffer in them, and throwing this can on there, and it, it is literally a game changer. Yeah, I mean, I shoot southpaw, so I'm <clears throat> lefty, so I get a massive amount of gas in my face. Every time I shoot AR-15 or piston-driven platform, or a, a direct impingement platform, so like, I'm const I'm very aware of a really well tuned yeah. gun. Uh, when it came with the Mark 18, we'll we have a video that we're coming out with that. We did. It was so gassy. Like, whenever I we put we swapped out, we had an RC2 uh, SOCOM Surefire can on there, and the amount of gas on there. You and I both shot, and you were just like your eyes are just watering. And it's it's, it's painful. Typical, typical Mark 18, yeah. typical 10 3, 11 5 barrels. They're always going to be over gas uh, due to dwell time, mm -hmm. due to Shorter system. Shorter system, everything like that. Yeah. So they're, they're going to be over gas. We understand that. That's just natural. They have to be to, to function properly. Yeah. Um, but what made me a believer with this thing is when we stuck it on the Mark 18, yeah. it was a different gun. Like it completely totally sucked all that gas out of that. Wow. That is no gas. And it started throwing it forward. I didn't have any it was yeah. it blew my mind yeah um, and it made me a believer we hear guys constantly all the time when it comes to shooting suppress and one of the first things they always ask hey should i put an adjustable gas block on here right. so i can cut gas out uh i'm not i'm not a super big fan of adjustable gas blocks uh they do work they will mm -hmm. they will cut some of that gas i would actually prefer to have a barrel that is 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 tuned more properly right. for for what i'm shooting it with um but <clears throat> with this system you don't even have to think about putting no. an adjustable gas block on it because it is a game changer. One of the other things that I love about it, um, too, is the amount of the the little bit of carbon slash blowback that you have in your face. You're not mm. constantly eating that all the time. We yeah. shoot a lot suppressed. A lot. We probably shoot more suppressed than what is actually healthy for us to do. Ah, it's fine. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, if, uh. if we probably went and seen a doctor, they'd probably say, hey, you shouldn't be breathing that stuff yeah. in quite as often as you do. Uh, but with this, I feel really, really comfortable mm -hmm. like teaching a class. Yeah. Like uh, we taught our general purpose rifle class. Yeah, last week, yeah. Yep, last week. By the way, if you guys are ever interested, one of the best ways to support us is to come take a class with us. Take training. Uh, train we, with us, yeah. We are not funded by anyone. We don't have a Patreon. We don't have anything like that. We have our Barrel and Hatchet website <clears throat> where you can pick up uh, some uh, Molly gear like our Ghost Chess Rig and, and take a class with us. Yeah. So we want to provide something back to you. Mm hmm um and some information so if you guys are interested in uh helping support us and want to train. invest in yourself come and train with us yeah. so we do offer a host of different classes we got our general purpose rifle class uh, we have our scope carbine class where we're pushing stuff out to distance mm -hmm. we have a red dot pistol class and then we also have our clandestine carry class our clandestine carry class is going to be more from concealment uh and working working that and then eric's favorite Night vision. Yeah, night so. vision. Everybody loves night vision, right? Yeah. So, yeah, uh, come and invest in yourself. Come take a class with us. And it also helps support us. It puts uh, money in the bank so we can keep on creating uh, videos for you guys yeah. and content. And also you get to maybe even yeah, try this out. Yeah, that's the other know? thing, too. Uh, as far as our rifles and our setups and stuff like that, we always have stuff. When we, have, we have tons of students that just jump on it and like, hey, I'm, can I try it? Can yeah. I try it? Yeah. All about it. Yep, yeah. Definitely. So. But yeah, I'm super happy with the can. I have not ran the muzzle brake. Uh, you didn't run the muzzle brake, right? You ran nah. the flash hider? Okay. Yeah. So, um, and I didn't even run the flash hider. I just left this on there. Yeah, I did run the flash hider, actually. Yeah. So I did run the flash hider on the, um, not on the 11.5. On the 13.9, right? On the 13.9. Yeah. That's what I ran the flash hider on without being suppressed. And honestly, I, I feel like it worked quite well. No flash, yeah. yeah. Uh, it does a very, very good job of, of hiding the signature. Mm -hmm. If you plan on running it both ways, if you don't, you know, you don't plan on dedicating it to be a suppressed gun all the time, uh, I would suggest that their flash hider actually works quite well. Yeah, so. and also speaking of flash, this is another big thing for me uh, when it comes to, especially like night vision, um, usually with the shorter cans, you kind of get that first round 
yep. that explosion and of fire, and yep. you don't get that with this. You don't get it nearly as much as I thought you would. Yeah. Okay. Now that being said, it is a flow through design. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the flash signature is going to be slightly a little bit more mm. than something like a Surefire R or RC2. Yeah. Okay. Um, but they did a good job on the front of this can, creating uh, almost like a flat, like a miniature flash hider yeah. to break some of that up. So the flash signature itself is not very wide, even though you have the gases coming out. Right. It's very narrow. It's narrow enough where I yeah, didn't even notice it. I almost thought there was no flash. Yeah. Now, understand, it could also be the ammo we're shooting. Like, steel case, we know is a little more flamey. Yeah. Uh, but running 62 grain, 55 grain mag tech, uh, I did notice it to a point where I honestly didn't even know there was flash coming out. So yep. it could have just been, like, real, like you said, coming out real small in the center, very low signature, which is honestly something that is a big deal for, yep. uh, especially, like, night vision or combative type uh, yep, exactly. attributes. So, and it doesn't, uh, that uh, the talking about, once again, back to the flow through design, uh, it, it just blows my mind as far as how nice it is yeah. to be able to rotate this thing around from gun to gun and yeah. not be, not have to worry about changing up any of your system whatsoever mm -hmm. to tune it to actually shoot suppress. Yeah. Or even vice versa, if I'm, if I'm shooting a hotter ammo. Like, like if I got my gun sh tuned to shoot 5.56, five, yeah. With my suppressor, and I'm running, you know, two, two, three, or something like that. The gun may not may not run properly. Yeah. yeah versus, absolutely. I could take something now that pretty much eats anything mm -hmm. that normally would be so overgassed. Yeah. And shoot it suppressed, and I don't have to worry about it. It's almost like this becomes the regulator. Yeah. Like this yeah. is the regulator. You're, the bolt speed that you have is 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 virtually not even increased. No, I mean actually, when you were and I, when yeah. we were running with the Mark 18. I had usually like, that brass was usually going forward when it yeah. was suppressed, and it was coming out at like yeah. two o'clock, exactly. three o'clock. So you put the can on it, and, and the ejection pattern is the same as it is unsuppressed. Unsuppressed, yeah. So, which is really really nice. The, I think they advertise like negative two percent to five percent mm. as far as what your bolt speed is going to increase, right. which typically on a normal suppressor like a like a Surefire or you know a uh, a Dead Air Sandman right. or something like that. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with those cans; they're great cans. Uh, eh, maybe not the dead air, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> like I said, come check out training and uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe not a dead unbiased air. opinions. Unbiased opinion. Yeah, I've had bad luck. Yeah, yeah. Um, except for the Nomad. The Nomad's yeah. been great. I've had bad luck with the Sandman, unfortunately. So it's um, gone the way of the Sandman. Yeah, it's gone yeah. the way of the Sandman. But yeah. that being said, the bolt speed is definitely increased by those cans. Right. So, which consequently means you need to slow that bolt down, yeah. and you got to add some type of buffer system in yeah. there uh, to do so. With this, you, you virtually didn't. Actually, I had put the, the Knight's Armament kind of away for a while, because mm -hmm. I was just kind of tired of eating gas yeah. all the time and shooting um, shooting one of my rifles that are tuned a little better, yeah. that, that I had kind of specced out and built, um, had uh, uh, chopped the barrel down and gas port size properly uh, for what it should be for running suppressed and was running that all the time, and then I picked up the Hux work, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to see if this solves the problem. <laughs> and then that was like where we, like, hey, let's jump on a Mark 18 again. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's jump on a short gun. Which I was opposed to doing. Yeah. I was like, like Eric's like, I don't want to jump on a Mark 18 again. So this thing is so gassy, so, yeah. but, uh, uh, yeah, man, I, I really like it. Uh, the only downside I could say to it, <clears throat> if I had any, has nothing to do with the can. It has to do with my lack of maintaining it. Right. Um... Meaning that you know, uh, occasionally it does get a little carboned up, mm -hmm. but um, but that's 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 on me. Uh, but that's it. I mean, yeah, that's really. I mean, I, I think for me, the, I would agree. Like the only thing maybe as far as maintenance I had to do with it a little bit was scrape the carbon off the muzzle device because yeah. it was kind of sticking when I take it off. It wasn't stuck. Like I just had to pull it a little little a little bit of force to pull it off. But like my my question is is as we continue to run this, how how long will that these ports mm -hmm. start to fill up, or if with proper maintenance, will they stay yeah. free? So, yeah. so this one right here, uh, the first one that we've had since September, it will continue to be unmaintenanced, uh, and we'll continue to shoot it mm -hmm. uh, against what Huxworks wishes are. Mm -hmm. I know they probably will not uh, warranty it, yeah. which is fine, uh, no big deal. Uh, it's a demo can. We're yeah. going to continue to shoot it. We're going to see what life does with it. So we'll, we'll, we'll update you guys as we progress through. We're sitting around that <clears throat> 6,000 round uh, threshold count. Our other one, we're going to maintain it. Yeah. Uh, that can's sitting roughly around about probably about 500 to 800 rounds right mm -hmm. now, <clears throat> and I've already maintained it. So yeah. I've already cleaned it. Nice. So, um, but yeah, we'll, yeah. See, we'll, we'll update you guys, see where we're at. And then I guess my last thing is, is I know a lot of suppressor companies are doing this, and this is because of the tyrannical agencies uh, that are in power, but as far as 
like a removable ID ring, it'd be cool to see something in the future where they had a removable ID ring. Oh. So that way, if this did need to be returned or maintenance, oh, okay. you're not losing yeah. a whole can. Just, <coughs> just a thought, yeah. but um, obviously, the more you maintain it, the longer it's going to last. Yeah, exactly. And I don't know how they would do that. To, but with the, I'm sure 3D printing eventually will come along. Listen, if they, they can print that. a can with a computer, yeah, maybe we could figure out. I a, can ID barely, ring. barely print on paper. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <My computer. laughs> what is toner even? What is that? What's wrong with my toner? Why yeah. do I need to replace my toner? Yeah, I can barely freaking <laughs> do anything. <laughs> I shoot guns. That's all I can do. So sorry for hacking. Yeah. So, got a little sinus cold going. Got a lot of Huxworth in his lungs. I mean, yeah, overall, uh, we've been super impressed with it. I, I know I've been impressed. I, I'm a believer the amount of reduction, the fact that this became a regulator versus regulating to run it. Yeah. Now it is regulating the gun. That made me a believer. It is, like you said, the future of, of, can, of yeah. suppressors. I've been very happy with it uh, enough where... Honestly, it's the only can I shoot with now currently mm -hmm. when it comes to 5.56 rifles. Uh, I cannot wait till they come out with the 3D pr printed version of the 7.62 yeah. 30 cal. Uh, hopefully that happens sooner than later because then that'll be my 30 cal can. Yeah, I mean, so. I'm, we're going to be shooting a match, and for my Mark 12, I have a Surefire device, and I'm kind of dreading putting a Surefire can on that. Yeah, we'll probably that, both run these, you know, yeah. so we'll pop them around. Yeah. Cool. But anyways, any final words? No, I think uh, I think that pretty much covers it. I'm super happy with it. I would suggest that uh, if, if, you're, if you're in the market looking for a new suppressor, I would highly suggest buying this. If you're interested in purchasing one, even if you're not in the state of Florida, you can hit us up, send us a message or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll try to help you out on pricing yeah. as best as we possibly can. Uh, to, so you guys, can. As best yeah, we can. As best as we can. <laughs> can. <laughs> Oh, Dad jokes. For yeah, days. Days, <laughs> yeah. We'll try to help you out as much as we can uh, to get uh, <laughs> to get that price as low as it, and as affordable, and so you guys can get out and train. Yeah, and if you go check out the description below, there's other discount codes with some awesome companies that we that we work with: Safari Land, Optics Planet, AT Armor. So all different types of uh, discount codes to save money. The economy's getting harder for folks out there, so please use those codes, save some money. Also, like Roy was saying. Come train with us. We would love to train with you. We love meeting our supporters and our students and stuff like that and getting to train with you. And also, you get to try out this type of stuff to help you make a better buying decision. But if you don't already, go check out our Instagram page. All of our behind-the-scenes stuff, pictures and stuff like that's on there, as well as Spotify. We actually released an episode today. Um, and so all of our guest-only episodes are on there, so go check that out, as well as our website. Yep. Come train with us. And also, remember, like always, you cannot form an opinion on the internet. you yes. got to go out Correct. and you got to put these things to use. Find somebody, get your opinion, make an informed decision, but go put down uh, some rounds downrange and actually go get some trigger time. So, Cool. All right. We'll see you on the next one. Bada bing, bada boom. We can. <laughs> we can. <laughs> we can. <laughs>